Right. So we were going through the me mechanical properties and we want, let me go back there. So we want to the compare mechanical properties. Here we have all the different materials to compare to. And the Zentex on the far right column uh, shows that the mechanical properties are really perfect. That's all you, you need. And as a bonus, the density is only about two. So compared to zirconia or to chrome cobalt, you will have a very strong material uh, with a three or four times the weight uh, for an equal structure. And compared to peak or pecton, you're gonna have a much stronger material. Flexion is three times uh, stronger. Uh, traction is, is five times. Uh, compression is, is four, six, seven times if you compare peak or pecton. So it's really mechanically optimized uh, material for framework. So we've been through that in detail. And those are all the testing that we have provided FDA in order to have the agreement to sell this product. Those are scanning electronic microscope picture uh, from a paper that was published uh, right before the summer. And on the left, it shows at 1000 time magnification, you see the network, it's a two dimensional network. So you see, you know, unfortunately you cannot see the mouse, but on the left, it shows the, you know, going slightly oblique from the top to the bottom, you have the, the fibers and to the right of the picture on the left, you have the section of the fibers. So the fibers are in the X and the Y plane. At 10K magnification, it's a blown up picture of the fibers, the longitudinal fibers. And on the far right, you have the cross section on the fibers in the, in the substrate made of polymer. This is, uh, testing that has been done for in order to write this paper. Here you have two implants. You have a Zantex framework, which is veneered with some composite. And you have a fatigue study that goes onto a, a machine at five hertz, bumping onto that thing until the, it breaks. And the good news is that when it breaks, the composite breaks, but not the Zentex. The framework is untouched. So obviously it makes it very easy to repair. It's yeah. just a matter of repairing the composite. The framework is untouched. So it's available in shape of a disc. There are standard discs, you know, the 98 millimeter disc in different thicknesses, or it's available also in arch form. And I will show you what we can do with uh, each of those things. So the arch at the beginning, you know, for many years, uh, we were offering the arch in two places that didn't have access to the digital world. And basically it was a cheap and easy way to make a reinforcement by hand. And of course the disc is for uh, CAD CAM. <clears throat> Let me show you what you can do with the, with the arch. Of course, this is intended to be a temporary restoration because if you have a bridge with the Zantex wafer, as I call them, which is five millimeter thick, uh, this will never break. But the weak link 
will be the acrylic or the composite around it. So this is why we cannot offer that for a permanent restoration. It needs to be a transitional. How do we make it work? Okay, we start with the, uh, with the project. And after the implants are done and the cylinders, the titanium cylinders are placed on the master model, the name of the game is to perforate the arch to fit those discs. So we have developed a manual technique to make it very accurate, as you can see here. Even if the implants are not parallel, we can make very accurate holes, but I won't, I won't go into detail today. That's not the purpose. This is a jig just to uh, evaluate the volume after we will reduce the arch to make sure we have enough clearance for the stock teeth. Now, the name of the game is to bond those titanium cylinders to the Zantex. This is very simple. You can use all kinds of uh, repair kits. You just need to silent the titanium and you use the primer and you bond them. That's it. After they've been bonded, it's almost impossible to separate. Then with a felt tip pen, you mark the, you outline your future reduction. And you use, this is a carborandum uh, wheel. It goes pretty fast. And you finish it up with a carbide uh, burr on the lab handpiece. And you use the jig to check the clearance to make sure you have removed enough of the material to have enough space for the teeth. Now, two techniques to uh, place the teeth, either use the flask, you know, denture technique, nothing new, or you can inject composite into your silicon jig. Let's go for the flask. Nothing exotic, very simple. You deflask, you remove the flashes, you polish, you make everything convex because this is immediate load. You know, it's the day of the surgery, basically. So convex shape, ovoid pontics, you can do ridge lap. And this is after a couple of, of hours, the temporary bridge. The second technique is to make 100% composite. You use injectable composite. You have very good brands today on the market, you know, lab composites from different companies. And you inject it in the silicon and onto the Zantex. You cure them light or in the boiler, it doesn't matter. This is the first shot. You just re you remove it from the silicon. And now you just need to make it look good. So you want to leave space for the enamel layers and you can make it like a European look if, if you want or so I know in California, you know, most of the people don't appreciate this kind of, of work, but there's no problem to make it all white, you know, it's just taste and colors. But you can you can make it look pretty good, you know, for a transitional the day of the surgery, that's not too bad. Any question at that point? No. Nope. So good. Um... Well, I'm sure you're going to answer it, so I'm going to let you just keep going. Okay. Now, recently, a few months ago, we had some labs uh, in the Middle East and, uh, and in other places who actually love the, the arch. They love this kind of little thing. So they asked us if there was a way to optimize uh, this, this flow, this process in order to machine 
the arch to accelerate and to incorporate this wafer into a PMMA bridge. So we never thought about that. And we say, oh, so, you know, we went to the drawing board and uh, actually I'm gonna show you where we are on, on this project. We're not a hundred percent done, but I'm gonna show you where we are but anyway. So, and the once again is, is for temporary. Uh, I'm sure that you do, you do some temporary PMMA uh, full arch on the implants, right? All the, yes, all the time, yeah. Yeah, you know, the problem with that is that uh, the modulus of elasticity is not good enough and you don't get a good splint on your implants. And if some of your implant don't have good primary stability, you have risk of micro movement and risk of uh, losing some implants. So by doing a very easy reinforcement with Xantex, you can get your plain PMMA bridge in, in a ET bridge, you know, it's gonna be virtually unbreakable. And it's amazing to see it, take it in your hand and you can do whatever you want. You will never break it. So how do we do it? So first of all, we had to design this holder, which basically looks a 98 millimeters plain vanilla bridge. And it just holds the Xantex arch in it. And basically you're gonna create your STL of your reinforcement. I'm gonna show you how, and you're gonna mill it on your uh, milling machine, you know? And what are you going to mill? And of course, the benefit is that you, it's a hundred percent machine time. You know, the labor time is gonna be limited to almost nothing. I will show you how. This is the PMMA uh, model. Actually, I didn't have a full PMMA mo model. So I used like a zirconia reduce model, but it's just to show you the principle. So you import the Xantex Arch into the software. This is done with a mesh mixer, but you can do it with any software. And, uh, and basically what you do, you orient your wafer more or less, you know, you can do it, you eyeball, you eyeball it. And when you are satisfied with the position of that, that's a little too low, you know, you finally tune it. You look at it from any direction. And when you like what you do, you do the Boolean intersection of both structures and it will create the wafer on the right. And then the Boolean difference will create the slot in your bridge. And what you do, you just bond the reinforcement into the slot, bingo. And you, you put your titanium cylinder and you're ready, you're ready to go. You, it will be a PMMA bridge on hormones because it will be impossible to flex it and even more impossible to break it. Okay, okay. so this is what we can do with, with the arch. Now I'm gonna show you what we can do with the, with the disc, which is, you know, most of what we sell so far. So it goes on even the small tabletop machines. They can machine that very well uh, using the peak strategy. Uh, carbide drill, wet, dry, doesn't matter. It works perfectly fine. And we have defined four different strategies for this material. The first one is what we've been doing for 30 years. It's, you know, all on four, all on, 
or on six or on eight using a flask. Basically what we do, instead of using the chrome cobalt material we've been using for 30 years, we substitute it with the Zantex. But the design, everything else remains the same. Another interesting new um, flow chart process would be to mill two structure, a PMMA structure, but that way, instead of inserting the Zantex laterally to reinforce, we will bond the PMA structure on the mill framework. The fourth one would be basically to use the technique to duplicate um, an existing bridge uh, or a plastic bridge that you will mill in a transparent flask. You know, a lot of companies offer these kind of things. I'm sure you're super familiar with that, but we will go through each of them uh, quickly. And the last one, which, yeah, you know, I, I like to call this the Bentley of implant dentistry, it will mix the Zantex as a framework and you will bond individual ceramic crowns. You know, I used to do that when I was a very young dentist, you know, 35 years ago, even more uh, on uh, gold. I was doing thimbles and I was putting ceramic crown onto my gold framework. You know, I was not doing implants at that time. It was sophisticated crown and bridge with a lot of uh, milling, but the milling was not digital. You know, it was all with the parallelograms. It was another era, you know, it makes me look old when I speak about those things. So this is the first case, very simple. This is plain vanilla. This is every single day. It's a all on four, all on six. You see the framework, uh, Zantex framework and the acrylic and stock teeth. The second technique, as I mentioned before, it's a milled Zantex, milled PMMA. The PMMA is just the shell. And what we'll do, we'll just bond one on top of another. So that's how it will look like when it's done. So you see the, the bonding of the two structures. It's pretty straightforward. It's another approach. This is much stronger than inserting the the wafer laterally and uh, it is just a different option and this is after characterization for a temp that's not too bad that's very quick so it's pretty inexpensive to generate these kind of uh, things and it's mostly mach machine time very little of uh, very little labor The third option is the injected composite in a transparent flask. Basically is to duplicate a temporary. So on the top of the screen, it's the AutoCAD uh, screenshots. And the bottom of the screen is the real thing after a milling. Speaks by itself the project and the final. And as you can see, the full arch, the weight is 7.7 .7 grams, very, very light. And you cannot break this in your hand. It's very, very strong. It's here is the same patient with the upper and lower. Here you have the x-ray when he was doing the, up, the upper one. And, and as you can see, uh, we were playing with a lot of different iterations of this material. At one point, we were doing a radio opaque material. Actually, we went back and we kept 
the non-radio opaque material for a very good reason, because you can see the fit of your titanium cylinder on your implant. When you have a very strongly radio opaque material like zirconia or chrome cobalt, sometimes it's a challenge to see if there is a perfect fit of your bridge onto the implant. Here, there is no cheating. It fits or it doesn't fit. So it's, it's a very nice advantage. Now that's another, that's another case, but basically it's the same thing. This is the Zantex framework. You see the occlusal view and the apical view. After bonding the cylinders, here we are. And now after injecting the first shot of dentin composite color, and now it's just you know reducing and stratification in the transparent flask. And this is the final. This is a real case. It's not just for demo. And those are the parameters for the material. You know, the minimum wall thickness, 0.6 millimeters. If you have some areas where you don't have that, it's better to leave it open to make it like in a C shape and leave this open rather than have having paper thin uh, walls. The ideal connection for the connectors is three millimeters buccolingual and five millimeters in height. Those are the numbers to get the maximum mechanical strength I, that I, we have seen at the beginning of the presentation. If you cut that to a three by three, you will get 80% of those mechanical properties, which is still a lot. When your framework has been prepared, you just sandblast it, you know, standard procedure, two bars alumina. Then you clean it with the steam, ethanol to dry. You apply the primer and you're ready to go for the cosmetic material. This is a, a little extreme case. I have chosen to show you this one because it's very interesting. This is extreme dentistry. You know, I had a very good master in uh, implant dentistry, you know, who passed away a few years ago. It was Lenny Linko from New York. I've been fed with him. I, I met him when I was still a student at the dental school. And I've learned some very exotic uh, implant dentistry from him, you know, not just the screw, but, you know, superior steel blades or all those kind of goodies. Today, there's no market for those, for those things. So, you know, forget about it from a business point of view. But just as an intellectual point of view, this is a patient who had an old titanium framework um, and she was not very happy because she was not very comfortable chewing on that. And you will understand when you see the implants. Those are the implants. You, you, see, you see the implants are, are in the chin. There is no alveolar bone. This is basal bone. And in the back, there are just titanium plates. So this is not very strong uh, implant structure. So when you put a lot of force, she was not very comfortable. So the practitioner, you know, Dr. Scortecci, uh, switch her bridge for a Zentex bridge and it changed the patient life because now with a more adequate modulus of elasticity in tune with the bone, then she could start to really chew normally. And the last uh, family of cases that I want to show you is ceramic teeth bonded to Zantex. 
So you see, this is the thimble cut preparation. This is with a free shape. The software generates that automatically. Then the teeth are generated individually. And the work on the gingival side is a composite. So of course, this is expensive a lot of components, but I would say this is something that is difficult to obtain with other materials. You know, the little trick to make a very nice finish, it's before you cement the crowns, you bond the crowns actually, and you apply the composite with the handpiece or a carbide burr, you recreate those profiles. That way you can really start building your composite the way it is uh, in nature on, on, a real, uh, on a real mouth. All right, so basically that's what I wanted to share 